Hey Board Game Maniacs, welcome to the next part of this uh, video mini-series for the game Test of Honor by Warlord Games. If you've been following the series up to this point, you've seen we did an unboxing so far, we uh, built some scenery and we painted it, kind of like rough painted as we went along. Now the next part, this video may be a little bit longer than the others, it may be short, I'm not 100% sure, but as you can see in front of me, we're onto the build part of the uh, video series. What we're going to attempt to build here is a gaming board made for Test of Honor. It's based in feudal Japan. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it kind of generic somewhat, as in, like, I know it's for Test of Honor, but if I have any other miniature games that I want to play, I'm going to have another board that I can use to play other miniature games, not just Test of Honor. But it is going to be kind of focused around Test of Honor. And who knows? We'll see what happens. I don't even know how this board is going to turn out. I built two other gaming boards before in the past, so I'm no professional. So by all means, don't take what I say 100% serious and legit because I'm no professional when it comes to doing this sort of stuff. I just know how to build props and masks and costumes, which I worked in the film industry for years doing. And I'm carrying over my skills into building this sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, the, the Test of Honor game board, it is a three by three gaming board that is used, it says in the instructions, it's three by three, but we're gonna make it a little bigger. We're gonna make it four by four, just so if we wanna play other games, we can, or even just playing Test of Honor. We got that, uh, that perimeter around the board that we can lay our cards down and our dice and our other miniatures. I make, I'm not making the area specific so that you could lay them down. It's going to be, the 4x4 four four is going to be included in the entire gaming board for that. But all in all, it's going to be 4x4, four, four, 4 feet by 4 feet. And the material I'm using is nothing special. It's nothing that you can't get in your local hardware store. So have a seat. Get your your knives all sharpened up and your drill, your power drill, the batteries charged, the saws plugged in, the everything all sharpened and everything, and get ready to watch us build this test of honor battle board. What we're looking at here is the materials that I'm going to use to make this uh, battle board for the Warlord game test of honor. Now the thing is, is I'm not showing everything here. I'm only gonna go go and show what I'm using in steps. So this is kind of like just a construction meal, just a, uh, construction material, not construction meal. Jeez. This is the construction material to just make the base of the game board. So you can see here, there's two sheets. And what this stuff is called is hardboard. Pretty much it's a whole bunch of wood chips and it's just all compressed together cardboard all compressed together to uh, create the, the sheets. These sheets are two feet wide by four feet long and there's two of them. So I'm going to put them side by side which is going to give me a four by four board. And that is for the hardboard. Now I got this at a local hardware store into the uh, discount bin. People, they go to uh, local hardware stores and they will buy sheets of this. It comes in like four by eight or four by nine sheets at different uh, thicknesses. I think this here is a quarter inch in thickness. I can't exactly recall. I didn't go to the hardware store and specifically say, hey, I want quarter inch, I want half inch and so forth. I just went and I looked in the discount bin and I got this and they were two sheets and I got them for two dollars. That's right because somebody was in before me and they bought uh, two sheets of this, but they only needed a cut in a certain length and they didn't need the rest of it. They just keep it there, you guys can have it. So the store sold it again for just a low, low price of $2. That was really good. So great deal on this. Next you see is a different uh, series of foam. I use this one in building the, the board, like I can cut into it and make mountains and caverns and everything which you will see as we go along various thicknesses too as well and surprise surprise I got this to the same uh, hardware store and it was in discount bin too as well they were throwing it out and hey that's well they were selling it and it was very cheap I think for all of this 
I think I paid me about eight dollars, I think. So different thicknesses, different sizes. You can see there. But it's gonna come with a good use for me for sure. And you can already see some stuff was cut out of it. But no big deal, I'll still use it because I can recycle. Recycle to make the battle board. Next you see here, these are uh, one by two pieces of pine board. Or pine wood, I should say. The, I opted to get, this is kind of where I spent most money, even though it was, I think it was like $7 for what I needed here. But what this is, yeah, the reason why I got the pine, because this stuff, it, it's meant to not warp. It's, you know, it's all nice and dried out and everything. It's really strong. So I got that for, for it, for sure. But with the herd board, a lot of people are probably saying, hey, why don't you get the plywood? Because that's what you put on top of the gaming tables. Or the battle boards is plywood. Well, I built two gaming tables, battle boards, already with this stuff. And I didn't have any warping or any issues whatsoever. So, and plus it's a heck of a lot cheaper than the, the, the plywood for sure. And that's why I did this. Not saying you can't use plywood, you can certainly use plywood. But this cut down on the cost, it cut down on the weight of the whole table too as well for me. The other ones I'm talking about that I built. So, that's it for pretty much the material for the construction of the base part. And also you got your tools and that. So measuring tape, screws, these are uh, screw, screw bits, cordless drill, cocking gun, and this stuff right here. So I've seen online that people have used uh, PVA to glue down the foam board to their, their battle board and so on and so on and carpenter's glue and all different types of glue. Well, my trick is this one. This is a uh, LePage construction adhesive. It's PL300, it's foam board. Now it's meant for gluing down foam, such as this stuff, but you can also use this to glue down wood and everything else. I know this because I've used it for that before. But what I always do is you're going to see building this, this table, well when I say what I always do, what I did in the past for the two other gaming tables that I built was I put the glue on this and I put the hard board on the frame and then I used the screws and I drilled into the frame through the hard board just to add a little bit more uh, strong, the more strength to it so it wouldn't come out. Plus again I used this and then when it came time to glue down the foam all I did was use this and I didn't, I put it in dot, like a dot pattern I pressed it into the hard board, I weighted it down, and I left it sit for about, you know, a good 10 hours or more. And it, would be, and it was dry and it did not come apart, it didn't separate. And I had no problems with it whatsoever. So that is just, again, I mean, I'm not a professional at building battle boards or construction of any kind. All I'm saying is this is what works for me. You obviously probably have different tricks that you do and other, th other suggestions for sure, which you can obviously leave down in the comments below about this because I'm still new to all of this stuff, but I'm only doing what works for me. If anything that you know works really good for you and you've proven it in the past by building different types of train boards, battle boards, and so forth, please let me know in the comments down below because I love educating myself and I love building this sort of stuff. I've only built two more and I had so much fun I'm looking forward to building this one. Okay, so let's go on to the steps of connecting the, uh, building the frame and then putting the hard board on top of it. We are at the drawing board. Ha, ha, ha. But yeah, we're at the drawing board. So I drew out the plan of how the board is going to look. So again, four feet by four feet. Each of the, the hard board sheets are two feet each. So the frame is going to have two four foot sections and then these two other ones that are on the outer edge of the the frame they're not exactly going to be four feet because you have to take off an inch and a half from each side because that is the thickness of the board so it's better than if an inch and a half roughly 
So you would split the inch in half, obviously. And same for that side too as well, and for in the center. So where the two uh, seams are, where they meet for the hardboard, I'm going to run a piece down here. I may even put the two pieces down because just add a little bit more stability to it. It may be two pieces or one plus the width will be easier to screw into. So I'm going to go and I'm going to cut these guys and I'm going to assemble the frame part and I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like before I attach the hardboard onto it. So it's just a frame I'm going to build first. I'm not going to record cutting it because you don't need a to see me cutting the wood because you know you cut the wood with a saw whether it's a hand saw or a power saw or you know anything that you have at your disposal disposal I should say why am I struggling to talk tonight it's almost every video I'm struggling to talk because I'm a maniac Rah! the frame is almost finished it only takes a couple of minutes to do but I kind of changed the design a little bit so originally I had the four feet going around the perimeter and then one in the middle but again where I said I may change it and I did a bit so I doubled this one up so I put this together put glue in between it and then I screwed it together now this is a two foot sheet and that's a two foot sheet and it met in the middle and the reason why I decided to change it because the most bend for this table what I'm thinking is going to be in the middle where the two the two uh boards meet the two panels meet so by doubling this up in the middle it's strengthening it up plus I go all the way down running it along just the outside now for the middle part here or the other part I just cut my wood from here to here and it should be the same for all four sides so because of that I'm just going to cut that put glue onto it and then screw it down and I'll show you the finished part of that part of the board when I come back the 4x4 frame and the hardboard on, is put on top. So that's what it looks like. Now again, the table that I have here that I previously adjusted, it's a 4x6, a little over four because I can fit like the 4x4 terrain and so forth into it, I have a little bit of play. Plus, you know, I got the tarp on to protect my game board. I know I can just build it in my shop. I'm kind of doing a combination of running back and forth. But anyhow, so, just a recap on what I did to get to this point, as I said before, is I took my pine board that you can see uh, right there, and I made a frame. So originally, I was going to just put a frame around the exterior and then one in the middle. But I changed that design. Kind of moving the camera around too much. Now, the reason why I changed the design was because in the middle even if just the one board going down it's going to get a little weak so I doubled up the uh, the one by four or the pine board from here so there's two pine boards running just like this but they're screwed together and then also pine board is screwed together side to side by side the brackets same with this too as well and there's also glue onto it that foam foam board glue that I showed you at the beginning of this video I did that too as well and then you could stop there like that's going to be nice and solid and sturdy for you but what I did is just as an add a little bit I had a little more braces on the bottom now this these braces are definitely not needed but I just me because it's me and I'm a maniac that's what I did so I'll show you the other end so the underneath part so you can see where I put some hardboard just here and in the middle and on the other end it does raise the board up just a little bit by like 316 because that's how thick this hardboard is. But that way it adds a little bit more uh, strength to it. But again, it's not needed by no means to do that part. But I'd like to do it just to add more strength. But also by using some more hardboard because this stuff is flexible. So what I did is by putting the hardboard underneath too as well. It still kept the flexibility. I know foam and everything's going on top of this and I'm going to build like a, a ridge around the entire thing with more hardboard. But other than that, I just did it this way so that it could have a little bit of give in the middle. So if it get hits, it's going to flex a little bit and then come back to its original shape, even with the foam on top of it. Because the foam was a little, got a little bit of flex to it too as well. Now also too, um, 
The next step for this is I'm going to put the foam, glue the foam on top of this. Then I got two uh, half inch, two foot by four foot sheet. So what I'm going to do with this one, instead of just gluing them a two foot sheet here and a two foot sheet here, I'm doing it the opposite way. Because this here is a perfect square, it's four by four. So I'm going to glue the foam this way instead, just so it adds like a, a cross, a cross hatching effect. And that again will add a little more strength to it too as well. Now, with this hardboard, some hardboard that you can get, it is smooth on one side and rough on the other. As you can see, this is the rough side instead of the smooth side. Smooth side is underneath. The reason why I did that is when I attach the, uh, the foam board glue onto this, it has all these little roughness into it, so the glue is gonna be able to attach itself to this and hold on really good too as well. And then it's gonna glue the foam on top of it. So it's gonna be, it's also gonna create another extra little lock, which I want. You can certainly do it. I, one of my other boards I made, I didn't use the rough side to glue the, fo the foam down to. I used the smooth side, it worked out perfectly fine. But again, again, because this is the rough, I'm doing it this way just so that the foam glue can have something else to attach itself to. And you can notice here with the, the screws that I did, now they're sunk, but they're not, I didn't countersink them. The reason why I didn't countersink them is because I'm putting foam over top of this anyhow, and I'm going to be creating like hills and valleys and everything, so it don't have to be perfectly fine to, you know, to go nice and tight into it. I may take the, the drill and just countersink a couple of more of these that are sticking out a little bit more than what I like. But other than that, I'm gonna glue the foam board down with the glue weighed down and leave it over nice, just so that it'll have the amount of a lot of time to set down. But I'll show you what it looks like after that. Just bear with me for a couple of camera magic seconds, even though it's gonna take a little longer than a couple of seconds on my end. There you can see I put down the foam board glue. And again, I ran a bead around the perimeter but trying to keep a little bit of distance from the edge because when it pushes it down so it don't bleed all the way out, make a complete mess. But you're gonna get a couple, a little bit of a mess, it's inevitable. And I ran a bead on the edge of the other piece of foam right here so when I squish the two of them together, the glue hopefully gonna fill up the space between but the glue's gonna overflow here and then I just gotta wipe it down. And I just put little tiny dollops all over the board and the reason for this too as well is because if I completely cover the entire board, it, it's going to take longer to dry, obviously, but also too as well as a little bit of airflow so that it will actually dry all the foam glue, foam board glue. But I never had any problems before using this foam board glue. So now I'm just going to take the foam sheet. I can't do it with one hand, obviously, so i got to turn the camera off in a second, but foam sheet, put it over top, squish it down in place, and with this foam glue, the way this works the best is you push it down in place, then you lift it up and you leave it sit for a couple of minutes, maybe about two to three minutes, and then reseat it back again. That way it just has more of a, a grip onto it and then I just have to leave it sit. So I'll be back to once I put the other piece of the foam on. There you have it, Board Game Maniacs. The foam is attached to the frame, the four x four frame. So, also too as well is like I said, I added a little glue to the seam on the sides and when I squished the two foam pieces together, it overflowed and then I just smoothened it out. Now this is a step that is not necessarily needed. I just did it because I may go and buy the grass mats that you put over top of it that's it's already pre-flocked and then glue it down. Or I may go with sand and grass and flock it all. So I'm not sure which way I'm doing it yet, so I seal this seam, kind of hid the seam so that when I drop the grass and sand, if I choose to do it that way, then it's not gonna go into the hole, into the crack. But even if it did, it's not gonna make a big difference. But yeah, there you go. So all I'm going to do now is I'm gonna leave this dry overnight, and then I will come back to add the other part of the foam because what I did, I didn't show you, but I will probably put included into the video, is I designed a board in Photoshop. Just 
uh, two-dimensional, like where I'm going to put a hill and where I'm going to put a pond if I choose to put a pond into it and so forth. So as an example, like I'm putting more foam, it's going to stretch across here. So there's going to be like a hill in the corner with stairs etched into the side of it. So you can go up and uh, I may sit like one of the buildings like the dojo right here or what have you. And the rest of it I'm thinking is I'm just going to put like a koi pond or something around this area so the bridge can go over it if I want to and if not it'll just be a piece of the train that is impassable when I'm playing other games and they have to go around it so that way it's not like a big uh, lake or a river I should say a stream like river flowing through the middle of the whole board that you know it may cause some problems with miniatures trying to cross it to get into battle. So that actually that's one good point. I've seen a uh, terrain talk from uh, tr the terrain tutor and what he talked about is when you were designing your board you had to think of these things of you know is it a display board is it going to be used to be played on by miniatures and so forth and that will determine how you design it what material you use to make it out of and so forth. So thank you very much Train Tutor for that video because it definitely helped me open my eyes up a little bit especially for some of you inexperienced in making game boards as I am. But so I'm going to leave this sit it's going to dry and then after it's dry then I'm going to start applying all the other pieces like the added foam to make the hills the mountains and everything. Uh, it's going to be over like uh, 18 hours until I get at this again. You're not going to tell because it, the next clip is going to be me putting the other foam onto it. So there you go. This is filming magic. Oh yeah. The foam board glue was dry and I let it sit long enough that I was able to do a little bit more work. But I'm doing this little bit by bit. I could just cut it all out and glue it down but I'm going by the designs of what I made off of the Photoshop, the 2D design. So I'll just show you what I did. So again, this stuff is set. So what I did is I designed the hill. It's not a mountain, it's a little hill that is going to be on the corner edge where my dojo is. And I glued this all down with the foam board glue. You can see I seamed here too as well because I'm not exactly sure yet if I'm going to use the matting to cover it over, if I'm going to flock it all. But what else I'm going to do is right here or on the edge, I'm not exactly sure yet. I have to look at my design, but I'm going to draw the stairs that they come down. Now the stairs that comes down, they're going to be pretty much etched to the stone from the side of the hill here. And I'm going to have some probably little cobblestones or something leading up here to the dojo. Just not all replaced, just a small little walkway part. And just to balance out the board, if you look on the other side right here, is the, the water mill and then the bridge. I wanted to incorporate the bridge because I just love the bridge. I never played any miniature games before that had a bridge. So this is going to be the first time. And what I did is I just drew out in the... Uh, on the board with the marker is where the water is going to come in. It turns the water mill and it comes out here to here. So this could be like a little koi pond or they could actually stand on the bridge and fish to get their food. So the water, they got the water mill, fish come in, they pull up around here and you can fish. I may even put some uh, bamboo around the edge here. I'm not exactly sure but that will be scattered terrain that can be removed because everything you see on the board like the houses they're not going to be permanent they're going to be able to be taken off but like the little waterway is going to be permanent there and also that hill because it's glued down with the foam glue now. So that's just a quick update here. So you only thought it took like a second but in actuality I let it dry and I'm going to let this dry now, that hill for, you know, another 10 hours. I'm not in a big rush to get this done as of yet. I'm kind of doing it when I come home from work. So that's what I'm doing. And after that is done creating, I'll come back because we are probably going to end up curving this out to the point where I can start making the water. But this all probably is going to have to be flocked before this is done, but at least I can cut it out. But I got the shape of it with the width, as you can see for the bridge. Right there, make a nice little scene for a battle. And right here too as well with the dojo. Very nice. 
So let's move on to the next part. The glue is all set onto the little hill. So the next step which I'm going to do is actually is just simply build a set of stairs before I start carving out the hillside to expose the rock. So I have the Samurai uh, Swordmaster right here. And the reason why I got him here is just so that I can make the stairs more to scale for this game. It's pretty much standard 28 millimeter size, but I'm going to place the stairs in this area where I have a, a little a little out, a little piece out. But the thing is, is I'm not going to curve the stairs first into this. I'm actually going to make the stairs out of more foam and I'm going to curve it out and then just glue them in with some hot glue or PVA glue. That way it's a little easier because if I screw up on curving this out of the stairs, then I have to cut this more and more deep into it. So I'm going to build the stairs and then we're going to start curving this out and we're going to apply the stairs in here. Now what we have is some uh, foam insulation, foam board, same as what I use here, just a different color. Now this thickness is, I think it's a half inch thick and that one there was a half inch thick. It's just two different colors, probably two different grade, but for what we're doing it don't really matter what the grade is. Well some train builders out there probably saying it totally matters what the grade is. But for me I just, I need foam and this is what I have laying around. So. There's a question you have to ask yourself when you're building a board such as this or any any uh, board. And the question is, are you going to make this board so that it's aesthetically pleasing more so than more technically proper for playing on? Or are you going to make it more technically proper and less aesthetically pleasing? Like kind of you have to do a half, happy balance of either or. So what I decided is for the stairs, I'm going to make this so that the miniatures can actually stand onto the stairs, each set of stairs. So because of that, the base of the stairs is going to be a lot considerably wider as opposed to, you know, it'd be half this distance if we were making it more accurate, more aesthetically pleasing. But because we're not doing that, we're making it more for playability. I am measuring out the, the width of the base in both directions so that I can make each uh, level of stairs that wide. So it may look a little strange, but again, it's more for the playability part and less for the aesthetics. And all I did for this, what I'm going to do is, you can see I have pen marks here already. So I want the stairs to be at least two miniature bases wide. So one miniature base, you can see the mark, two. So this is how long, how wide it's going to be. Now the way we're going to determine of how high it has to be for the hill is I'm going to put foam and stand it right up next to the um, to the foam hill right there until I build it up to that level. I'll know, okay, so that's how many levels of foam I need to bring it. I'm going to do that and I'll come back to you. That is uh, the stairs, what I designed. I didn't, it's not going to be sticking out of the hill. Again, I'm going to cut into it so it's kind of growing into the hill. This is all going to be a stone face too as well. So this is just the basic shape. I'm still going to cut it down and uh, give it some texture and so forth. And I'm going to glue it together. Now, they say you can glue it together with foam glue, like the foam board glue. Uh, PVA glue if you want to as well. And what I'm going to glue this in with though is going to be hot glue. And the reason why I'm doing it is just it's a little quicker to set up so I can keep continuing working getting this game board built. And just to show you the stairs, how big I got the stairs, what I designed the stairs, the size to be, is so that at least two miniatures standing side by side can fully stand and go up the stairs without any problems or falling off or what have you. But I'm not going to make it any bigger than that. Now what I also might put is some like... Uh, some stone golems or stone pillars that are on each side of it while it's inset or I might just leave it inset with the the mantle just all around it too as well but just to quickly show you how I built this is I first measured the depth of each of this it's an inch and 1 16th for the basis so they're able to stand freely enough now this here why I measured this how I came up with that is after I just cut probably that length and then I cut the other length right here with the inch and one sixteenth. And then I cut the other one for the inch and one sixteenth. So therefore that kind of just stacked them 
gave him the stairs and you know you put them up here it's nice and flush but we'll see what happens so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to take my uh, my sharp little exacto knife and I'm going to cut down the corners of these so I don't want them to be rough corners and then I'm going to texture these I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it is glued to as well just a quick look at how I'm texturing the stairs you can see up close there's some nice uh, stone texture going on I just took my exacto knife and I cut the, all the corners off and I cut some little bevels into it so this is what I call an exacto knife it's just you know you get your local hardware store and to get all this texture uh, what I did is I seen this on a tutorial on YouTube I can't remember exactly who did it but they created a texture stand for foam of plain old tin foil that you buy into your grocery store so you bought some and I just made it all I scrunched it up made it all nice and tight and hard and then you just take it and you just you roll onto your foam and you get all this texture so I'm going to do the rest for these two finish cutting the edges and then giving it some texture and hot gluing it and show you what it looks like in the end that is the stairs complete so again, you can see all the little detail that I, did. I cut it with my X-Acto knife and also I did with uh, the tin foil method to give it some texture. So, and this is roughly where I want the stones, the, the stone stairs to be, but they're not gonna be stuck out like this. I'm going to actually cut into this itself and then inset this and you now I may be pillars on the sides. It may be just rocks that, you know, like from the inside of the hill that kind of crumble down. I'm not exactly sure yet, but we'll decide and just do it because <laughs> that's what we do. So the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just trace out of how far I want the stairs inset. And then I'm going to start cutting into this. I'm going to start cutting into the, uh, the hill foam too as well to make it all look rocky and jaggedy looking. For the materials that I'm using to cut into the foam, you see, just exacto knife, and I got a steak knife with the, the, I don't know if I can bring that up and bring it in focus. That's a little better, but I cut the point off, it just so I can make rough cuts and messy cuts into the foam. And also, too, as well, is I have uh, different, different grades of sandpaper here that I'm going to be using just to help sand it down. And also, too, as well, obviously, magic marker time. So... I got my stairs where I want them. I'm going to trace out roughly where I want it and then move the stairs, cut this and then start chopping into this with the, the knife and the X-Acto blade and then I'll be back and you'll see the rough cut of the side of the hill. I started carving. You can't really see off the camera right here but I cut it where the stairs is going to go and I started shaping out the, the hill on the side. Again, you can't really see it off, ca off ugh, can't really see it on camera. But you can see the stairs are going to kind of set inward like this. It's going to take the stairs out for now. And the reason why I can't see it because I'm going to do the whole process here. Just in this one section of how I go about and cut out the, the rock face of the hill. I'd say mountain, but it's not really that big. Because if you take the miniature and compare it to the size, like you can see, it's just pretty much right at the top of... Uh, the master swordsman head so this is as tall as I wanted this ridge I guess you could call it to be so that's what I'm aiming for so first off I'm going to take my exacto knife and pretty much all I'm doing now what I'm doing I'm going to be cutting up down the bottom of this too as well it's if you hit it with your uh, with your exacto knife if you're following along with the build and you're building one too as well. If that's not a big deal, because you're going to be covering this up with either flocking or the flocking matter, what have you. But I just cut a little bit off of there. I'm going to take my knife and I'm just going to kind of go along a bit, cut out the, the, the sharp corner or the edge. Hope everybody can see this. Good. So you can see, I just, again, I'm not going to any specific kind of design. For the most part, I'm just going in and I'm slicing the crap out of the foam until I get a shape that I think, hey, this works really good. I like it. So I'm going to take my steak knife with the tip. And the reason why I got the tip off, because it's 
when I'm cutting down into the foam and I don't have that, that pointed tip to start doing it, but to make nice clean cuts because I want it to be rough and bending the foam around and moving it. As you can see, hopefully the audio isn't too bad. And plus, sort of thing, it'll be because the tip is it's got the, the piece cut out, you can take it and scrape it along it and it helps a lot too as well. And then finish cutting it some more this way, just like this. See what it looks like. And I'm just taking my hand now and where I cut it and you got all this nice little pieces. You can save this pieces later to create rubble, which uh, one of the other boards when I was making the mountain part of it, that's what I did is I just saved all this bits and pieces up and created rubble with it. So all I did is I put this into like a little container so I could use it later on. And that was it. So anyhow, I'm creating the roughness of this. So you can see here, now another thing what I like to do is after I got a cut down and you know I like the look of it, it's like hey this looks like a good mountain and how are you going to know, if, or not mountain but like a, a ridge or what have you, how do you know it looks good? Because if you think it looks good it's probably good. But you can always just jump on Google and you could Google images of like uh, cliff faces and rocky mountains and everything too as well. So I took, I'm taking some grit sandpaper now, this is a heavier grit, it's a, a 36. It's very rough, and all I'm doing is I'm just going over the edge, again, where I cut it, I'm just ripping into it even more, just nice and gently here, just to help smoothen it out a little bit, just like that. So you still get the, all the indentations in the rough edge part, but it, it's a little smoother, it's not as jagged. You can leave it jagged if you want, but I want this this uh, ridge or cliff face to be like it's been slowly eroding over time, so it's very subtle, it's not something that's strapped off. Or it's been cut out by the samurai. When I say the samurai, I mean the commoners, the samurai got the commoners to cut it out of the village. But that's how you do that. You can see this here is a seam right here, but I'm going to use that to my advantage and just chop that in a little bit so it's going to be a little bit more erosion that's going on up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, I'm going to continue the rest of the board, get this all done, and then I'm going to come back to you and show you what it looks like, and then we're going to work on chiseling out the, uh, focusing on where the stairs is going to make it look more rock, rock-like I guess is the best way to say it. So stand by for that. Just to show you a quick reference of uh like a rock face, ridge face, whatever you want to do. This is one of the uh, other gaming boards that I built in the past. It's actually a full 4x6 uh, gaming table, but it's in 2x4 section, so it equals the, the 6 feet by 4 feet. But this is the mountain part of it, just to show you. So, again, I did the same technique as what I'm doing right now. It's kind of a little wobbly because it's, it's teetering onto my shelving. But you can see the rock face is all cut up. And how I did that is exactly the same way as what I'm doing to the Test of Honor board. I'm taking the, uh, the X-Acto knife and I'm cutting into the foam. And then I'm cutting into the foam again with the steak knife using the, the flat edge as well as just the steak knife in general. Just ripping and pulling at it to make it irregular shape such as all of this. And when that's all done, just taking the sandpaper and smoothing it down in spots but there's some spots like here that I kept it nice and rough and that's what I'm going for but not as much jagged texture as this one here for the mountain because you can see like there's two as well as like a pathway where to walk up but I'm not going to make it as jagged as this one's going to be a little less jaggedy if that's an actual word I don't know but it's going to be a little less jaggedy anyhow uh, and it's not a rock cliff itself because the miniatures kind of stand up to about here so it got a good height so it's just going to be a hell of one I'm creating for test of honor but that is what I'm going for for the cliff face so let's go back and take a look at the progress where I'm cutting into the foam to make that nice little 
rocky part. As you can see, I'm still working on the, uh, the, the rocky part here, and I still have to work out the, uh, the stairs inset. So I'm going to be just keep chipping away. Now this here was where the seam was, but I cut it so it's a nice little indent. I'm still working on that too as well. I'm still going to keep chipping away here with the steak knife and exactly blade and sandpaper. And when I'm all done with that, I will come back to you and you can see exactly what it looks like. Finished up the smoothing of the, the rock face or cliff face or hill face or whatever. Oh. And uh, I also got the stairs inset. Now, I cut a little bit deeper to get the stairs slid in a bit more because with the angle, the stairs aren't really stuck out too much in front of the cliff face. And the reason for that is when they made the stairs, they just would carve them in to the cliff instead of, you know, building stairs and putting them into it. So I wanted to make it as realistic as possible for that. Now, with this last stair piece, I may end up just carving this down smoothing it in a little bit more just so it kind of matches with the grade of this but as you can see sanded all this down and cut it one more cut it with the steak knife and just fine sanding just very little to keep that texture and then what this is is just a whole bunch of leftover styrofoam that was used to chop away the hill and then it's just sanded down the edges not to make them look like boulders so that it's they're hot glued into place on both sides now what's good about that is because they're hot, hot glued in, they're not going to come out easily. You know, eventually they may give way, but I chose to use hot glue instead of PVA. And everybody knows the reason why I chose that, and that's because it just it was quicker to get done. So that is the stairs part. For the most part, I may just adjust it here and there a little bit, but I'm very happy with the way they turned out. It kind of matched my drawings, my design that I had already done up. So my next step that I'm going to be doing is going to be none other than, you guessed it, I'm gonna start digging in and cutting in and making the, uh, the waterway into the pond. I'm going to cut it out, I'm gonna sculpt it out, then I'm gonna paint the underneath of it and I'm gonna fill it with the clear plastic resin so the color will come through the clear plastic resin. And I'm also gonna use some little more pieces of this stuff here, like the little boulders. I'm going to put them inside of it. I may put a couple of pieces of tree or something so that it's been floating in there or sunk to the bottom and then just around the outside with the boulders make it look really nice and neat because this is the primary source of both water for the village and as well as the food because of the fish. And that is my next step. So hang on and we'll show you that next. What I'm planning on doing for the uh the water part is I'm just going to carve this out but I'm not going to carve it completely down flat to the uh, hardboard. I'm going to do a general roundness to the whole thing and once I get that all cut out then I'm going to do the same thing like I I did here for the, uh, the stairs. I'm going to make all little pebbles and rocks and also I'm probably going to I may possibly put real rocks in here too as well. I'm going to line it so obviously the deepest part is going to be the middle and it gets higher as it goes out. I'm going to line it all with different rocks to dress it up. And then after that's done, I'm going to paint this with acrylic paint first. Make sure it's all sealed with PVA. And then I'm going to use the plastic resin. So that is the steps. So let's just start off by cutting this out. What's really good here is because this is kind of like the, the inflow of the water. I can see how deep I want to cut with here to make the middle the deepest. And then I can use that as my base. And then just keep going and cutting with my knife and cutting this out. So what I'm going to do, just not to bore everybody, is I'm going to use my X-Acto knife, sharp blade, cut into this, get this all down to the shape I want. And when I'm done with that, I'll come back and show you what it looks like and we'll go on to the next step. I cut the shape out roughly with my knife and now I'm just using the heavier grit sandpaper and going in and smoothing it down. Just like so. As you can tell, my next step, what I'm going to do before I start populating all of this area with stones and everything for the uh, the waterway slash pond is I have a whole bunch of different 
types of acrylic paint here. I got some sand and I got paint brushes and I got a mixing palette right there. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to mix up a color and I'm going to go from dark to light and then the sides are going to have a little bit of brown onto it for the the mud area and it's going to be populated the whole thing with little rocks and that's going to take a little while to do for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first mix up the color, apply that with a just a paintbrush. I'm not doing any airbrushing on this at all. And then I'm just going to keep building up and up and up. I will show you my progress as I go along. I would show you while I'm painting, but I need my two hands and I need to use the camera if I'm going to record it unless I do it on a tripod, which I might do. In either case, you will see the progress. First color I'm going to use is blue. I'm just going to go directly in the center where this is going to be the deepest part. Hopefully, it's going to work out the way I want it. So I'm not watering down the, the paint at all. I'm just going directly on. You know, keep in mind that, you know, where we're painting this, we're going to be also sealing everything so it's going to protect it in. And that's with uh, several layers of PVA glue. And then that will help a lot for sealing it. Now, I like, the reason why I'm doing this is uh, painting this first before putting down the rocks and all the other detail is when I put the rocks down and I glue them down and I need to paint around it because something is wrong I'm oh crap I didn't do that right I have to you know it's hard to paint it but this way it's already painted underneath so I'm building pretty much the lowest up or the deepest for this case because this here is the uh, the riverbed so this blue is going to really shine through a lot. And I'm going to feather it out so it's it's heavy and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and then I can add to my other coat and transition the color easier that way. What I did there too as well is I took the blue, that is the deepest part. I mixed some with the green. This green is a spring green. It's kind of like a lighter, on the lighter side of green. And then also I mixed in some white. So to give it a little bit more highlight. And I gradually adding more white to it to mix it up so that it kind of helps blend it in easier. So again, all I'm doing, very simple, is it's kind of wet blending is exactly what it's what I'm doing here. You now I know that I'm gonna, you know, put sand on the bottom of this, really bright colored sand, so it's gonna be able to bring up the, the yeah, underneath the clear resin. It's gonna show all this nice texture and everything, and then the color transition. So because I'm doing this, like it's, it's gonna be pretty, it, it's gonna look good because the fact is, is where I'm putting the sand onto the bottom of it too as well, it's kinda, Going to help blend all these colors in a little bit more, make it look more realistic looking. And at the same time, if I do any screw ups, the sand's going to help, you know, hide <laughs> my mistakes. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep wet blending all of these colors together until I get a color that I'm happy with. Then I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like before I add the sand. What I'm doing now is I added the uh, I'm happy with how dark the blue is blend it with the the tone of green and then now I'm adding my white mixing with the blue to make it like a, a lighter level that it goes up top I still have to add the brown in here too as well and you know uh, the rocks are going to be a grayish color like stone obviously and on top of that the sand is a brown but it's a light colored sand and it has a little bit of a, a shimmer to it and that's what I want so when I put the resin on over top of this and it dries you're still you know you can look at different angles and you'll get a little shimmer still and that's just going to be created by the rocks so it'll be pretty easy for that that's my plan anyhow I just hope that it's going to work so again all I'm doing here is just wet blending the green the blue and the white together just so it gives kind of like a 
a general gradation, I guess, for depth. They show that it's, or give the uh, impression that it's deeper than what it is. That's what I'm going for in the end. Next thing I'm going to work on is adding a little bit of the brown. Now, this is burnt umber, and I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to add little bits and pieces of the brown. The brown is going to be more kind of carried up around the edge right here where the water is going to slowly rise to. So it's going to go there and then this is going to be a little light too as well. I'll mix some burnt umber with brown and gradually roll it up. So darker brown and then more burnt umber that way. So that's what I'm going to do next. Here I'm painting the uh, burnt umber as you can see. I'm kind of slowly carrying it down to the where it starts getting deep blue. And as I go up, I'm just, I'm not adding more to it. I'm letting the brown kind of fill in little spots. And, you know, I'm still letting the green, the white, the light blue show through. Because I want to create this kind of gradation look, I guess, is the best way to, to, to say it. So that this is kind of like the, the muddy part of the river as the uh, it goes down or the waterway. So I'm just going to continue to keep stippling this on and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. I'm almost done doing all the detail that I want for the the paint part of this. You can see this is just straight burnt umber now and I'm kind of just filling in the cracks or the, the grain that you can see from where I sand it with the rough sandpaper with the burnt umber and I'm slowly kind of blending everything in. Now just keep in mind this technique that I'm doing this is all while the paint is wet. I never let a layer dry. I always just keep adding to what is the wet layer already and I just keep adding the colors to it to give like a, a wet blending so that it's easier to get that gradation. Now Obviously, you're probably able to do this easier with the paint, not, I mean an airbrush, but I kind of just like using my paintbrush to do this because I like painting. I love airbrushing too as well, but it just, I find I have more control this way. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just blending in the, uh, the brown to make like the muddy dirt part. After that is done, I'm going to probably add the sand into it, then the rocks and then PVA seal everything before the resin. So just keep watching the video and I'll keep jumping in time to time and show you what I, my progress is. My next step on what I'm doing after I'm satisfied with the paint job of the, uh, the river and the pond. So my next step, as you can see, I got some rocks here. I'm going to dress this whole thing with rocks. And I'm also going to put down some sand. And again, like I said, this sand Got a little bit of a shine to it, so it's going to look really cool underneath the uh, the clear resin for sure. And the way I'm gluing the sand down and the rocks, well, PVA glue for the sand. The rocks, I'm going to use hot glue from a hot gun. And also, the last thing I'm going to do, just to add a little bit of detail to that, I'm kind of walking away from the camera to grab it because I forgot, is you can see this right here. Now this here is like a Christmas tree that you can get from, that I got from my local dollar store. It's kind of like a little stylish thing. So I painted it brown to a point. I'm gonna snip it off and I'm gonna put it in there like it's a huge tree that fell and it's kind of like left in there. And that's, just to add a little more detail to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with the sand and I'm gonna do the rocks in the tree. And that is our next step. For the sand part, I just shake it up. I watered the PVA down just slightly to give it a little bit more runny consistency. So I'm gonna just put the PVA in spots and then I'm gonna sprinkle the, um, the sand over top of it and just to help smoothen out the stuff, just so I can control the flow of the sand a little bit more. Just dumping it in, you know, moving it around a bit. Taking my sand. I'm just doing some sprinkles. 
So yeah, that's going to really show up a lot. And that's what I want. So I'm going to keep adding this to sand and I'll be back. Now, I added the little bits of sand. Now, the PVA is still trying to dry onto it. Um, I also added that tree, the tree stump or whatever, that's going to be kind of like sunken in. So my next step for this is I'm going to take my rocks. I'm going to start hot gluing maybe a little bit around the tree here. And then I'm just going to start building up all of this. So when I finish hot gluing, and again, like I'm not going to bore you by showing showing you when I'm doing the hot gluing steps, but I'm taking my rocks. You can see there, a rock. In focus, I hope. There we go. So I'm taking like these rocks. I'm selectively picking smaller ones and big ones, and I'm just going to take them and hot glue them. But I'm not going just around the edge right here. I'm kind of it's the same way as painting, I'm going to do a gradation of the rocks. So the heavier part of the rocks, obviously, is the upper part around the, the rim. And as it goes deeper, it's going to get more sparse, less and less rocks here. So thick to thin. And then after that's done, I'm going to probably start painting the rocks. Now, what I'm doing is, because I'm going to be filling this up with plastic resin, I know the level that I want to hit with the plastic resin for the water. So some of the rocks that are submerged underneath the, the plastic resin. I'm going to paint them differently before I put the plastic resin on. The reason why is because if you ever see, if you ever go fishing or you know you look in a lake or anything, colors do kind of change somewhat underwater than what it does on top of water. So it does look a little bit plus. Because it's underwater, you're going to have some moss buildup. And I have some moss that I got too as well. I bought all the moss stuff at the dollar store. So, so far this build has not cost me a lot of money at all. It's, it's very, very little. Um, I'm going to try to do a tally if I remember at the end of the, the video and tell everybody how much this cost me to build the, the game board itself. Uh, one thing I want to uh, take note of is in hindsight, what I should have done is like my other uh, gaming table is divided this into a four foot. You can see this way is four feet. And instead of another four foot this way, uh, there you can see my hand. I was trying to put it. So instead of a uh, four foot width this way, I should have made two two foot sections that you can piece together. And the reason why is number one for transport, but I don't plan on transporting this gaming board anywhere. It's gonna stay in my studio. Uh, number two is storage, it's easier to store. And number three, when you're working on this, like when I put the sand down, I had to brush off the sand what wasn't stuck to the PVA. So pretty much I had to lift this 4x4 four four table up on its side and bang the, the excess sand off so it would fall loosely off. I don't know if there's another method for doing this, but this is what I've done in the past and it seemed to work for me and this is what I keep doing. So if it was a 2x4 section table, it'd be a lot easier to just lift off and lift up and bang off. But it's still super light so far, but it's just a little cumbersome because of size. Anyhow, I'm starting to ramble. So I'm going to glue down different rocks, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like with the rocks. I have all the sand the rocks in place and what I want to put inside of the waterway here. Now, I originally said I was going to line the, the rocks along the entire edge of it, but I kind of changed the line because I don't want it to look too busy yet. So I may add more of the rocks later on, but right now this is the, the most amount the rocks want, like more where it's settled here. And, you know, thinking about fish wise, the fish could hide in, underneath this uh, tree log and, you know, around the rocks and everything. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of like uh, green moss hanging around and that. So after I add some of the moss and everything, I kind of lift this part more clear because this is where the water does run and the water mill kind of moves everything and, and pushes it this way. This is where all most of the settlement will be. Turned a little bit of moss on some of the rocks and then probably some moss kind of just stuck to the bottom of the, uh, the floor of the waterway too as well, a river or pond. Pond part is kind of like the waterway. In any case, that's what I'm going to do and then I'm just gonna completely saturate the rest of it with the PVA left dry. You see here that there's a little white here still because I did start putting PVA onto it but I stopped just so I could start recording this to show you where I'm at with this 
and what my plans are next for it. So that's what I'm doing. A little bit of green moss onto the rocks where they're painted and lightened up a little bit. And also too as well is, you know, maybe some moss floating around and then PVA it all and then that will be sealing it so that I can be able to use the plastic resin which is going to be next after I do all the other steps. So I added the moss just in spots where it build up over the rocks and so forth like that. So it was pretty simple to do. You just throw it in a little bit. I used a little bit of hot glue. You can see a little bit of the shininess. But the shininess is fine because when I put the plastic resin, it's going to be shiny too as well. And the type of moss I use, if you can see this, I just got it from a dollar store, local dollar store. It's floral moss. So you can get it in different colors like the, the green. You can get it kind of like in the, the brownish dried out colors. You can get it a whole bunch of different types of colors, but I chose just to use the green. So my next step again is I'm just going to PVA everything to seal it and then leave it sit, put another layer of PVA, leave it sit, put another layer of PVA, just to make sure that everything here is sealed before I go on to the plastic resin part. The PVA is all set and dry. It's been, I let it sit for an entire night, so it's the next day. It's all nice and dry, it's nice and hard. Um, you can see the bumpiness over here a bit. Now, I just that's because I just kind of pulled up the PVA over it and I put a little bit of extra, extra PVA around some of the edges. Uh, now, what I didn't mention is the end here where it's coming off the board, I backed it with some tape, some plastic tape, then duct tape. And then what I did is just for a little bit of added protection, I put PVA on the tape and around the, around the seam. And also I just took some sulfur free oil clay and I put it here to more of a protective seam. Now one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this uh, Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover Clear Matte Spray. So it also bonds the plastic. Now one thing that I have to uh, mention about this is putting it just on the plastic, it can melt it. So what I went and did is I just took PVA and I put it kind of like this area right here to protect it more. So if it does eat up the, the styrofoam just a little bit, it's not going to be a big deal because I'm covering it over with flocking or foam mat. But just be known that this stuff is known to eat into styrofoam. Now another thing too as well is when you're dealing with this stuff, it's always good to wear protective gear. For building this entire game board, it's always good to wear your protective gear. What you don't see on camera, because I'm not pointing out my face or anything, I have a mask, and then when I'm cutting up foam and that, it's always good to have a pair of safety glasses too as well. And when you're dealing with any harsh chemicals, wear some rubber gloves, which you will see, or latex-free gloves, or just some kind of protective gloves. So I'm going to spray this over the oil-based sulfur-free clay. And then I'm going to leave it set for about five minutes till it sets. And then I'm going to start mixing up the plastic resin and pouring it in. The type of plastic resin that I'm using, it is crystal clear. It's made by Smooth On. It's a rigid urethane casting resin. So. What's really good about this casting resin, resin it's a two-part mixture, it's a part A to part B, you mix in equal ratios. You don't have to use this to make your water effects. There's so many ways of making water effects with different types of epoxies or even uh, urethanes. And There's so much different resins that are right on the market that you can use, but this is what I had kicking around, so I'm using it. And it says water clear. Now that's a big thing for me. So again, where I designed the, uh, the water, underneath I want the colors, the blues and the greens and the browns and the light blues to all show through from underneath. And by using the crystal clear, it's clear as water. So it's going to pretty much just create the water effect for me. Um, I've used this before, but I use this when I'm making props. Because again, as I mentioned, I make props and masks and costumes for uh, the haunted house industry as well as the film industry. I've been doing that for about 20 years, so I'm very familiar with the types of products. So again, it's a 
part one to part two makes sure equal. So if I put 20 grams of one, I put 20 grams of part B in, and you mix it all together thoroughly, and then you pour it in. But I'm not saying that's how much is needed there. Uh, what I could do is I could dump water onto the board into the pond area and have it filled up and then dump it back out into a cup carefully and then weigh the weigh it to see how much I need that way I'm not going to lose any excess material but I'm eyeballing this I already kind of I'm used to doing this I'm pretty good at eyeballing so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to mix part A and B together I'm going to mix it thoroughly I'm going to pour it into the uh, the river and then I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like so I poured A and B together. You can see that it's clear. It's got some bubbles. Um, it's good to leave this set for at least eight to 10 hours or even sometimes longer, depending on what you're doing. So I'm gonna leave it set for a good amount of time to make sure it's nice and solidified and it passes the soft stage and goes to the hard plastic stage. So when you're mixing this stuff, you gotta scrape the sides, scrape the bottom really good. Make sure it's really good and then I'm going to go pour it and I'll show you after that because it's hard to uh, treat the camera angle and pour it so I have to just do it and then I'll be back. There you have the resin is poured. So you can see it's super clear, it's shiny and when it dries that is exactly what it's going to dry like. Just like that. You know, super shiny, nice and clear, showing all the colors making the colors where I painted them a little vibrant. You can see a little bit of air bubbles. It is self-leveling, but only to a point because it is still liquid. It's thicker than water, but you still have to work it around to make sure that you have everything all nice and set. The good thing about this though is after this is dry, if it overflows and I have to cut it down a bit, all I have to do is sand it because it is sandable. Now, another thing too as well, which I didn't show on camera, but I'm going to say this because it is a very important step before you even go to attempt to pour the plastic resin. What you want to do is you want to take a level and you want to make sure that your surface that you're pouring the plastic resin is actually level. So I didn't show that on camera but I had a four foot level and I put it across this way and I put it across this way and I leveled it out. Now this is on my gaming table and I know my gaming table is really good. Like it's nice and level, the floor is level. But all I had to do is just add some popsicle sticks on the corner here just to bring up the level just slightly. Not enough that it would have impact if I didn't put the popsicle sticks under there, but you know, better safe than sorry as they say. So now since that is done and it's poured and we have to leave it dry. So the next step is a waiting game pretty much. You have to wait until that's dry. Now what I could do is I could tackle starting to paint the rock face and the stairs right here if I wanted to. But when you're doing other stuff and you have uh, plastic resin that is, you know, it's curing, there's always a chance of you can brush, brush debris into it. And if you do that, it's going to ruin it. Unless you want the debris into it, of course. But I want that debris, so I may hold off from painting this until this is finished. It is a good distance away. Time will tell. I will decide and go on from there. So you won't know how much time has gone by because, you know, this is movie magic happening right here. A cut to you from one cutscene to another is not even a second long. But for me, it could be a week, could be two weeks, could be a day, could be an hour, who knows? Anyhow, I'll see you when this is dry or if we start painting that or both, who knows? Okay, 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 I decided. I'm going to just start painting the uh, rock part and the stairs of the uh, the little incline. I decided that's what I'm calling it, is the incline. That's it. So I'm gonna start painting this. Um, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna put a base coat down. It's probably gonna be like a grayish color because I wanna go for like a, a, a gray looking rock so that I paint the stairs. It's gonna be like a gray stone too as well. So I'm gonna paint that. Next step, I'm going to put a homemade wash onto it. And then after that, then I'm gonna highlight it. So you're gonna see all that, I'll explain it more as we go along. But right now, I'm just gonna start painting the gray base coat. For the base coat of the gray, I'm, all I'm mixing is more of a concentration of white and a little bit of the black to put onto painting just the base 
of that. That is my first step for the color. That's the color gray I'm going for for the base coat. So I will painting, I'll come back and show you my next step. Camera's shaking a bit, sorry guys. I'm doing a stabbing action, or stippling, whatever way you want to call it, just to make sure it gets in all the, the cracks. And the paint that I showed you that I'm using, it's just cheap dollar store water-based acrylic paint. And that's it, like it's nothing expensive here that I'm using. By no means. You could go ahead and buy your expensive paint and use that, but you know what? I'm happy with using the paint that I'm using. The paint, the base paint coat is down. You can see it's kind of like a medium gray color. I don't want it too bright, but I don't want it too dark because when I put the black wash over it, what's gonna happen is it's definitely gonna be darkening it up. And then after that is done, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to do a dry brush with a, a couple of various colors, like maybe like a little brown, a little bit of blue, and also too as well, like a really light gray to a white. So when I get to that point, I'll show you. For the wash that I'm putting over the, uh, the stairs, I got this recipe off of the Terrain Tutor. If you go to YouTube and search up Terrain Tutor and then go to uh, Make Your Own Wash, I think it's called, or uh, Basic Washes for Beginners or whatever, it tells you exactly what to do. And all it is is acrylic paint. I use black. And then some water. And you only fill the water up just so it's going over top of the, uh, the paint that you put into it. Now again, the mixture could be different according to what your needs are. And also too, as so well, a little bit of maybe a drop or two of uh, dish soap. The dish soap, what it does is it, it's like a, a flowing agent, plus when you put it on, it pulls where it's supposed to pull and don't pull where it should pull. It, it's kind of hard to explain. You have to still control the pulling a bit and just brush off where you don't want it. The Terrain Tutor does an excellent job on how to make it to make the wash and how to use it and everything so this is what i've been following where i made my other two board tables game board tables so i'm doing the same for this because now this works for me it may not work for you you may want to do something else you may want to use like the citadel washes or the army painter washes or what have you which you certainly can do it's up to you but this is what i know works for me and it's good for on a budget and that's why i'm using it you know, applying the wash, I just got it in a cup. You know, one thing about the washes is that it will settle quickly, the paint. So you want to kind of work fast or you just want to pretty much uh, mix it up every couple of minutes or, you know, before you use it. So it's settling in, it looks pretty black. Like, wow, that, that's a really dark wash, it's too dark. But there's a trick that I do to lighten it up and I'll show you in a second how much it is. I'm not gonna cover the whole thing right now, I'm going piece by piece, because what I have to do, I need to do it this way. So hang on one second and I'll show you my trick that I do. Now I already started doing it on this side, it's off camera. But the trick is I just take a spray bottle full of water and I give it a little bit of a spritz just to saturate. Then I take a piece of paper towel or a cloth and I dab. Now, by dabbing, what I'm doing is I'm leaving the dark color, the, the wash, into the recesses. But I'm dabbing it off so that, you know, it don't just completely pull up too much. You can see there how it's starting to look. You can see how the color picking up on all the little cut marks that I done with my steak knife and that's what I wanted. So I'm going to continue doing this and when I come back I'll show you a little closer shot of it. That's what it looks like with one layer of wash over it. Because it's a little more watered in it does take a little longer to dry so you know you just have to bide your time because if you just add more wash to, uh, to the coat that's already wet you're not doing anything to it you have to wait till it dries. 
Now one thing I like to mention too as well is because I did it in sections, like I said, so a little section at a time, you don't want to oversaturate it with both the uh, the wash mixture as well as you know spraying the water on top of it because it is foam, it is porous, and what happens is that it will suck up the moisture and the water and it can cause some very bad effects onto your uh, foam. What I like to do, I did this, I didn't mention it on camera until now, and the reason why is I'll tell you right now, is that what I like to do is I like to take a heat gun and I go over the entire surface of the board, the foam board, everything, and the reason why I do that is I try, I put the heat gun so it kind of closes the cells onto it, if that makes sense. I just find that when I do the, put the heat gun onto the foam, it does kind of stop the absorbency of the, the wash or water or anything you're putting onto it. Excuse me, I got the hiccups here. So that's why I use the heat gun and I'll just go across it. Like I won't burn it. I want to hold it close to it, you know, a good six to eight inches away, depending on how hot your heat gun gets. And just seal it with the heat gun before you start applying anything to it. Paint, glue, you name it. So that's what I did there. I just didn't do it on camera because it is really loud. I know we could cut the audio out, but eh, whatever. You guys get the idea. It's just basic heat gun and you just take it at a distance and just, you know, do it. And what's really cool is when you're applying the heat gun, you'll be able to see like the shininess come out onto the, uh, onto the game board or the foam, I should say. So anyhow, that is where I'm at. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this dry and then I'm going to apply another color wash. I'm thinking I may not do another black one, kind of like the density, the, the darkness of it there. Density. How dense it looks. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do is mix up like a, a brown, a brown wash and do a brown wash too as well. Just to bring it, if I don't like it after doing the brown wash, all I got to do is just add more black wash to it and it'll just cover it up. But that's what I'm going to do and I'll be back and show you what that looks like before I start dry brushing the highlights. Time to add the other color wash, the brown. Now I use the burnt umber, mix it up with a little bit of black and I'm following the same way having made the other washes. So, yep, just going over it, brushing it all on, and get in there. So I don't expect all this brown to stay on there, overpowering. So I'm going to use the same method of just spraying it with some water and wiping it off. Now if I don't like the way the brown turns out, then all I have to do is just do another wash of the black and go over it. So again, this one, I'm not rubbing to get it off or anything. I'm still just dabbing away just to keep a little bit of that brown and the black just like so. So I'm going to keep doing this and then I'll be back with you guys when I am done of doing the washes. The next step is the dry brush. Now I'm sure people are pretty familiar with dry brush, just in case you don't know though, you get your color. Now I'm starting with like a, a medium brown, it's like a burnt umber, and I'm gonna dry brush it, then dry brush a lighter brown, and I'm gonna keep going up to like an almost grayish white. And I just use a chip brush, these are cheap chip brushes you can get at a hardware store in packs, very cheap and expensive. So you would dip your brush in here, and you would take some paper towel and material and you would brush off your brush until you get almost hardly any paint left onto your bristles. And then you'd come over here and then you would just lightly go and brush on all of the, the raised areas from where I chopped out with the steak knife and the X-Acto knife. And then that will leave just a, a faint brown color on top and then you just keep going on and on with different colors. So I will show you how to dry brush as we continue. Okie dokie. So dry brushing time first. So you can't really see too much of this on camera where I'm dry brushing, but I just got a little the brown going on and now I'm just going to lightly dust over everything. Now this is going to work too as well only if your washes and all the other paint is dry first. Because if not, you know you're just fighting a losing battle here. So again, 
very light touch just going back and forth in different directions to pick out all of the the rock face there so I'm going to keep doing that I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like with the different colors of the dry brushing and we'll move on from there first layer is done which is like the the burnt umber now I'm going on to a lighter brown so all I did was I kept using the burnt umber and I mixed a little bit of white with it so again same thing just going over it you can see all the detail in it was actually starting to pop and that's what I wanted it just takes time you have to build it up slowly I'm still going to go over this again with a little bit of gray uh, more white than gray but I'm going to go over the dry brushing of it so I'm kind of off camera here. Anyhow, you get the idea there? Just very light dry brushing, just like that. So I'll come back when I do the gray, the light gray. That is the light gray, the last coat that I'm doing of the color. You can see the little variations. What I didn't show on camera is I took a little, little tiny bit of red. I put that into it. And also, I did a little bit more medium gray, and then I went over the final with the light coat of gray, like a super light gray. And that brought out all the highlights. So I'm going to leave this dry, and then when that's dry, now I have to decide the big question. Decide the big question. Decide on the big question. Decide on the answer what I'm going to do. I'm talking in riddles here. And that is... This gaming table, am I going to use the pre-sheeted uh, flocking mats, I guess they're called? I, I have some. Am I going to do that? Or am I going to just use flocking sand and just do the whole table in flocking sand? Not sure. i got to really think about that. That's a tough question. So just stand by and I'll figure out what happened, what I'm going to do. And while I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this paint dry, obviously, right here. And we'll go from there. But I'm thinking I may possibly do a combination of both. Like some sheets of the flock. And then just flocking and sand on top of that too as well. Just in little areas. It's hard to decide what to do. We'll figure it out. I'll be back. What I decided to do is I'm going to try to lay down the grass mat. And after the grass mat, what I'm probably going to do is just dress it up where I need to by adding a little more flocking and sand. I'm going to apply the cobblestones too as well. So, uh, just so everybody knows, this is the grass mat I'm using while I'm getting the light here. It's a Heki grass mat. H-E-K-I. It is 47 inches by 23 and a half inches. Now, it does show some... Uh, a manual or instructions a little bit about how to apply it but I am not really going to apply it exactly by using what they say here what I'm going to be doing because this is foam board that we have and I've talked about the foam board too as well beforehand and I know what sticks to foam board and holds stuff down because as you could tell in the previously that what I glued this down with and it's nice and secure it will not come off I'm going to use the same thing so, I'm going to use my uh, LePage Construction Adhesive PL300 Foam Board. And that's what I'm going to do to glue this down. So, I'm going to take some measurements. I'm going to lay the mat out. I'm going to roll it out. First, I'm probably going to start up here. And I'm going to roll it out and cut it to size with my scissors. And then I'm going to put the foam board down. The foam board glue down onto the foam board. Place it onto it and then probably weigh it down with a box or something just to hold it in place and leave it sit. And that goes for the rest of this too as well. Let's see how that goes. To save a little bit of headaches and excess waste of the foam mat, this foam mat right here, what I did is I just took some uh, paper, just standard 8.5 by 11 printer sheets. You can see here. And I laid it on top of the hill and I traced out the, the outline of the rock face. But I kind of left a little bit of an overhang, as you can see, just a bit. And with the printer paper, what it is, I made a template. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it onto the grass mat. 
and trace it out and then cut it and that will let me know exactly how big and there's less waste of material and less fuss than trying to lay it out, hold it in place and try to cut it while it is. Now I know some people they're like hey there's an easier way of doing this. Just put glue on here, roll the grass mat out and cut it while it's gluing down. I know but the thing is is I like it to be a little more precise for me anyhow and this is my thinking on how I'm going to do this by creating a template and that's what I'm doing so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the template I'm going to lay it on the foam grass mat I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to come back we're going to glue this down not the paper but just onto the foam and then lay the grass mat down and we'll see how that looks as you can see I laid out the grass mat upside down because there's a paper backing which is really good you can draw on that and then what I did is I took my uh, my template that I made for my hill and I took it and I flipped it over and before I did I wrote on it the top part for the top and the bottom for the bottom that way I don't get mixed up so that because this is only this mat is one sided mat there's not grass on both sides if I had the top pointed upward and you can see the word top what's going to happen is when you go to fit it on here it's going to fit the opposite so you have to you know just label it so that you don't get confused so that's what I did is I labeled it traced it out and I put some pin markers just stuck it to the foam itself very to secure it and then I traced all the line so it didn't shift and then I'm just gonna take my scissors cut it out and then it'll be ready to be glued onto this I spread all the foam glue down so I just put it in little dots and dashes everywhere that I used a stick or in this case a painter stick and I just smoothen it down so that there, you know it's not super high it's going to create bumps or ridges or anything after a while so smoothen this all down and then I'm just going to place the uh, the grass mat on top and weigh it down and secure it I'm probably going to use a combination of the pins that I showed you and also probably just put some kind of box or something on top of it to weigh it down. I'll be back when I do that. I finished, I did the template, I drew it out as I showed you previously. Cut out this and I stuck it down. Now, with the foam glue on here, one thing I have to say about this foam glue is it's, it's awesome. It is making the uh, grass mat stick very quickly to it. You don't have a lot of time, maybe two or three minutes that you can get to play around with it and then it's pretty stuck down. So what I did, after that you can see here I got like the, the little yellow pins. I stuck them sporadically throughout the edge before I went in and I cut and trimmed the rest with the, uh, the X-Acto knife. I did that so I'm leaving these pins in here just until this sets up a little bit. I know it's stuck really good but better safe than sorry. So that part is glued down. You can see here there's some glue over spill because I spread a little too far. That's not a big deal because what I plan on doing after I get all the grass mat done for the entire board is I'm going to come back in with some flocking and some more fake rocks and I'm going to put them all along the edge to hide the seam of this to make it look a little more. I'm going to make some of the grass kind of grow down the rock face slightly so that's going to be a lot of fun to do. And also too as well is one thing that I did do if you can look a little closer is I said to leave a little bit of excess overhang and the reason why so that you can bend the, the mat down and I put the foam glue underneath it so this is going to be gluing to the sides and again I also secured it with pins which are, the pins are all going to be removed when the foam glue is dry completely. So after that's all done I pull the foam pins and this is all done. Um, I'm going to take the hardboard and I'm going to measure the width and the shape. I'm going to just take a pencil and trace it. And I'm going to finish it off with some nice sides of the, the hardboard. Just to give a little more, you know, nice clean look at the end of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show it off camera. Because this entire process that I did here is exactly the same what I'm doing for the entire board. Even for the water part. I'm just going to trace around it with the template. Make sure I have it, put the foam board, the foam glue down and then spread it out, hold it with pins and everything and then I will be back to show you what that looks like. I finished putting the grass mat as you can see over the entirety of the board. Um, 
I'll let the glue, the foam glue set a little bit before I moved out the little yellow pins, the stick pins. I bought them at just like a, a local superstore. You can get them at a fabric store. They're just meant to hold for alterations when you are sewing like a hemming pants or sewing uh, material. They're just, that's what the little yellow pins are for. So with this here, just to show you, you've seen this, I removed all the pins. And I removed all the pins around the edging and everywhere else too as well. The reason why I removed all the pins now, the foam glue is still setting, it's still soft. But you don't want to leave the foam pit, the, the needles, or the little yellow pins I should say, I'm stumbling here. <laughs> you don't want to leave the little yellow pins stuck into the foam while the glue is setting. Because what happens is that if you leave them little yellow pins in there until so just say like 24 hours or 10 hours or what have you, what you're doing is inevitably, inevitably you're gluing the pins into the foam and then you're going to have the darndest time to go around and pull them out. So what I suggest, well what I did anyhow, is after I glued it and I put the, uh, the grass mat on, I leave it sit for probably about 20 minutes or so and it, I just made sure I went and I just checked like an edge and it was nice and stuck down so I'm like okay it's time to remove the pins so I just went around and I pulled all the pins out just so they don't get glued into the foam so you can see here too as well as I cut out this and you can see some of the foam showing through so the reason why I didn't cut it exact with the template is because I want to dress the sides here with like rocks and more flocking and so forth too as well. And the same with over here you can see there's a considerable gap. But the reason why there's a gap is it's, it's been intentional that the gap is there. Because I want to dress it with some more flock and some rocks and maybe like some stone, some stone pillars or something. I'm not 100% sure on that but that's what I'm gonna do and you can see like you can see a little seam where I met the two pieces together it's very faint but it's still noticeable and you can see there's another seam here where the glue kind of overspilled a bit so what I'm doing with that is I'm just gonna add more flock around it why I'm doing that is because right now if you look at it it kind of looks like a golf course and I don't want my battle board to look like a golf course and the way to break this up for the golf course, I know once you, once you put terrain and everything else on it everywhere, it's not going to look so much like a golf course. But this here is, you know, it has different uh, flocking colors into it, like a little bit of yellow. I see a little bit of brown, a little bit of green. I don't know if you can pick that up in camera too much, but I still want to add a little more variation to it. And the reason why I want to do that is to take away the golf course look. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start dressing all of this and all of the space here too as well and around the seam and the edges and everything. And the way I'm going to do that, you're going to see it anyhow, but just so I can explain it slightly, a little bit of uh, PVA glue, you know, in the empty spaces. I'm going to take different color flock and I'm just going to, you know, sprinkle it on. A little bit of sand, sprinkle it on leave it sit and when it's dry I'm gonna lift the board completely up on its side just to get all the loose stuff it's going to fall and mix in with this stuff I know that but inevitably because I have my trusted little mini broom here I'm gonna brush this all off it's gonna go down on my tarp so I can pick it up again and reuse it and then after I do that I'm gonna lay the board back down I'm gonna go with more PVA glue where I put the uh, put the flock and the sand on it again. I'm going to put some sand all in here and around there because it's too clean. It's too, it looks like it's been too well kept. I know that, you know, feudal Japan, they probably took care of their grass. They didn't have a lot more, obviously, but they still, you know, made it nice and nice and neat looking. Not this neat, not golf course neat. If I was building a miniature golf course, hey, I'm done. But it's not a miniature golf course, so I'm going to add a little more variation with flocking just to uh, kind of like throw it a little bit more color into it to make it look like it's a little bit more grungy in certain spots. 
And also, as I said way before into the beginning of this video or so forth, I'm going to put some cobblestones too as well. Maybe just here. I may even put some cobblestones here. Uh, I have to refer to my drawings and see what I have, where I had the placement of the cobblestones and everything. But so far I'm very, very happy with the way this board has turned out so far. And I just want to keep pushing forward. So let's get on to doing the PVM flocking in the sand. I have all my material laid out for me to do the, uh, the flocking part. And what that material is, just so everyone knows, is some sand. This is called fun sand. Or just sand they use for in like uh, children's sandboxes. Hardware store, but a friend of mine had some that owns a landscaping company. Gave me it. So no money spent there, which is great. This is various uh, flock. They can get it citadel, but you know, you don't have to use citadel. You can use whatever you want. Same with this one. It's a different tone. Probably going to mix a couple of them, give it a little bit more variation, mix them together. Here's some more flock too as well. This is more thicker flock. I'm going to use that for, you know, more close to the edge here and going up the, uh, the mountain side or the cliff side. And more flock too as well, just to break it up. In here, I have some... This is the foam that I saved from cutting into the uh, the foam side here to make the cliff face. So I'm going to use that, glue some of that down for the rocks. So there's that. And I also have over there, you can see is some pebbles and various size rocks I'm going to use to dress it up to as well. So let's see what happens here. The one important factor that I didn't mention is this is a bottle, it's a PVA glue mixed with water. So it has, you know, probably like three quarters water and one quarter, or three quarters PVA and one quarter water to give it more of a watery uh, water down to it. Apply it, put the flocking or whatever on, and then leave it sit, and then apply over top of it. it it's very standard. If you ever built any uh, board games before, or war games, game boards, whatever you want to call it, battle boards. That's what it is, battle boards or if you ever base any of your miniatures by putting like rocks or flocking or cork or whatever down on it, you use PVA glue mostly. Because that just sets up, takes a little bit of time to set up, but I'm not in any big giant rush here and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start flocking here. When I start flocking, I will come back and show you. I started doing the flocking, you can see here. So this is bare, like here, it showed everything. So what I did is I took some of my PVA glue, my water down PVA glue, which is this stuff, and I squirted it on just very little. I took a little chip brush, spread it around where I wanted it, and then I took my flocking and sprinkled it on, pressed it down, sprinkled more on just so that the glue would be able to set both into the mat and to the flocking. And then I leave this sit, and then I'm going to brush it all off, tip the table up, and bang out the excess. So I'm going to continue on doing all of this. I'll set the camera up just so you can see what I'm doing. And when I'm all done with this, we'll come back. Also, I'm doing the top too as well, dressing this all up too. There's some PVA at the top here. Spreading PVA around. Can't really see that part on camera, but it's alright.
hiding the seam of the mat. See, it's just blocking it in. Gonna be putting sand down there too as well. Sprinkling some flocking down. Can also grab the sand. Different texture is always good. I like different types of texture. Again, I'm going to be going through this whole step, this whole process a lot. Like I'm going to be putting some sand down, putting some flocking down, leaving it sit, see what it looks like, adding in a little bit more here and there, jumping back and forth, and then maybe some rocks I'll be doing too as well. But that's pretty much it on how you're doing it. Let it, excuse me, let it dry. After let it dry, you're gonna knock it all off. So if there's any beer spots, add more PVA. And then cover the whole thing with PVA. That is the uh, platform cliffside all flocked and sanded so again it looks pretty messy right now it is going I want it to be a little messy anyhow in the end but not this messy I just showed you exactly how I do it now I'm not saying this is the only way to do it or the correct way of doing it. I just know that this way works for me from the other board games that are the war battle boards that I built already so what I'm going to do I continue this process over the entirety of the surface of the board in spots just to make it look a little dirty you can see I have my uh, water mill and bridge set up there just to see roughly the placement of it where I'm going to uh, have to put flocking and sand and everything on there too as well so this I just got this just to measure the distance and so forth um you don't have to have it exactly in this position or I don't have to have it exactly in this position every time I play the game I just put it there to see what it looks like so I'm going to dress here, along here too as well, doing the same method I did over there and on the rest of the board. And when it's all done, I'm going to clean it all off, put the other PVA glue down. After I'm done with that, I will come back and we'll see the total result of what I did. In the middle of doing the uh, flocking and sand, what I'm also do <coughs> doing is I am um, creating like a, a stone walk path that it's going to be overgrown, it's not going to, you're only going to see bits and pieces here and there on the table. So I took the miniature just for the size, comparison of how big. I drew out some designs, it's got, I'm going to draw several of these, again it's not going to span over the entire board though, it's only going to be sporadic. And all this is, is just a roll of corking, or cork that you guess and you can put this on miniature bases you can do so much stuff with this stuff but that's what I'm doing I'm just cutting these out I drew the designs I'm gonna cut them out and when I glue them down I'm gonna glue them down with the hot glue gun and then I'm just going to apply flocking and sand to the edges of these two as well so that's another thing that I'm doing on top of doing the flocking and sand so I'm kinda of doing a uh, combination of both so just stand by and when I'm all done with that, I will show you exactly what it is. Very simple. That's the example of the uh, stone pathway that I did from the stairs 
and now it's going down. So you can paint all of this before you put it down, which is perfectly fine. Me, I'm not 100% sure where I wanted it. Well, according to my designs, like I knew the shape of the path from where I wanted it to go. But since it's there, I'm just going to take some acrylic paint, mix with some uh, watered down PVA glue. And I'm going to paint over top of this with a very small brush. And that will give me the gray stones and then the flocking in the sand too as well. Make it look like it's grown in. That it's not clean. Because the, the path, it's only a short path right here. So what I may do is continue it along the entire length. Or I may leave it just like that and make it look like, oh, this is where it broke off at. I'm not 100% sure yet for that. Because that's a, in my design work I didn't decide if I wanted to go across the entire length or not. But that's what you look like in paint it and flock it, flock the rest of the board and come back. Now you see that I finished the flock off the entire board, or on the entire board I should say. Plus it don't look like a, a golf course anymore, it actually looks like it's been nice and worn in. And pretty much what I said before previously in the video is just explain and reiterate them how I did this. Is I mixed up the different colored flocks that I have and also sand. I put uh, PVA glue down and I took the brush and I spread it to PVA. Now, uh, a quick note with using the uh, grass mat that I found out from doing this project so far is when you just put the PVA glue down and if you don't uh, really work it in by taking the brush and stippling all over it and spreading it out so it's nice and feathered, you're going to get these really, really strong lines of PVA. Now the PVA will dry clear but the thing is is the uh, the mat, the grass mat will probably have a, a different tone to it from where the PVA is on. It's probably going to be like a little darker. It's going to make it look like it's wet. So just keep that in mind if you're using these grass mats and doing the PVA. So anyhow just to keep going on and what I did is you can see a little patch here that I did. So PVA the mixture of the different colored flock. I think use like a dark green, uh, light green that is close to the original color of the uh, the grass mat, and then I put a little little tiny bit of um, clump foliage too as well, like a dark green clump foliage, and then sand obviously and mix it all together and then put this down everywhere on the entire board. And also too as well as after that was done and it dried, then. Like I said, I took the whole gaming board and I turned it on its edge and I brushed it all down with my broom just to make sure that I don't, I got all the loose particles off of the board and then I came back in again and I redid another coat of PVA to seal it. And that's pretty much it. One other thing I did, which I didn't show on camera, is I took a product which is called a, a matte crystal clear. It's Krylon. You can get it in any hardware store, Krylon crystal clear. and. I like the way that the uh, the board, the water looked on camera previously, but I think it was a little too shiny, especially for playing games. And again, I didn't design this board to be like a display board or something that is very aesthetically pleasing. I wanted to design it so it looked cool, but the main purpose of this entire board was the playing onto it and recording the videos onto it. So what I did is I sprayed the Crown Crystal Clear over the top of the uh, the plastic resin, the clear resin, that cut down on the shine and once it's dry like it gives a little bit of a, it feels like a light sandpaper texture almost but you can see you still get a little bit of shine on camera like you can see when I hit the lights but it's not as shiny as it was before I sprayed it so it did dullen it down a lot and that's good because on camera I don't want something that's going to blow out the, uh, the white balance and just throw the camera off completely. And that's what I did for that part, just anybody's wondering. And again, same thing with the flocking and the sand with the PVA and sealing it, as you can see there. Uh, and also too, as well, as we'll just swing over here. I finished all of this off so you can see the flocking right here and the sand that kind of made it so it was growing at the side of the, the platform here too as well and I even put some overgrowth onto the stairs and I really liked how the how the stone walkway worked out I painted it with the the watered down PVA plus the acrylic paint mix after I did that I went in with the sand and the flocking 
and just to make it look like it's been overgrown. Now originally, like I said, I didn't know if, for my design if I was going to continue it the entire length. So I kind of just did it here because I like where it just ends. It's like the earth took over the stone and just completely made it disappear and this is the only thing left of it. I like that part. I think that was pretty cool. So you can see here too as well. I had all the flocking and sand and everything done. So I was very pleased. Very, very pleased with that. And there's one other thing. There's no seams anymore. Amazing! Yeah, so all I did to hide the seams, because if you remember, there was a, a very significant, distinguishable seam that went along the entire edge right here. And what I did again is just use the PVA and flocking and the sand, and I put it all out and blended it all out, so there's no seam here anymore. You can't see the seam from the, uh, the mat. Same with along this edge, there was a seam, and that has disappeared. You can't see this, the main seam that went right down the middle too as well. You can see a little tiny, oh no, that was just a light shot shining. Okay, so yeah, so you can't even see the seam there, but I know it's there because I built a table. And that is it for the, uh, pretty much the detailing that I want to do for this uh, gaming table for Tests of Honor by Warlord Games. Now there's only one more step that I want to do. It is optional. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it just so that it's going to protect the sides of the gaming table for when I move it. And you guess, I'm going to take the hardboard and I'm going to cut a template so it goes the entire length of each side. So it's going to encase, so if anything gets dinged on the side, it's not going to destroy the foam. It's just going to hit the hardboard, which is perfectly fine. And the way I'm going to uh, glue that down is I'm going to use a little bit of foam board glue right here. And I'm also going to uh, you probably use a little bit of uh, finishing nails. I'll do that and I'll come back and I'll show you exactly what the entire final project looks like. There you have it, Board Game Maniacs. The battle board for Test of Honor by Warlord Games complete in its entirety. So. The last thing that I said that I was going to do is I'm going to make some, cut some hardboard and to shape, glue it on and nail it. And then I just painted it. You can see it's going all the way around. It just gives a nice finish to the board, but ultimately the reason why it's there is for protection in case something hits it. So on this side, I made the lip a little bit more prominent just because of the waterway here, I wanted to come up a little higher. I didn't want it to just have a bulge here and then it go back down and be uh, flush to this. It kind of looks silly, so I left a little lip there. So, all in all, this build was a lot of fun. I learned a lot compared to my other two board uh, battle boards that I built. I definitely learned a lot more. Um, in hindsight, a couple of things I do differently is you now this is a four by four for test of honor it is meant for a three by three but that's no big deal we could just you know mark it off and put the buildings for the three by three and play it that's not a big deal so but in hindsight what i would have done is i would still would have kept it a four by four but i would make uh two modular boards so uh four foot four foot by two feet and then four feet by two feet. That way you can piece them together. The reason for that is just for storage to make it a little bit more easier to store because that's where I built my other boards but I figured hey I'm just going to build a 4x4 four four. and that's what I did and it is fairly large so in hindsight I would do that. Another thing that I would do that's in hindsight is um, if you look at the, the border that is going here. Now what I would do just to change this up a bit is after I built the, the frame and I put the hardboard and then I put the foam and I carved the curved whatever I was carving into it, before I do any flocking or putting a, the grass mat on or what have you, I would probably cut the sides and uh, glue them and nail them to the frame and the foam and then I would carry this over the edging like you can see there's a difference here but I would carry the, 
the flocking over to right to the end so you don't see this this border on the entire game board it's not a big deal but I think it would probably look a little bit more professional that way nice and it'll look a lot more cleaner than what it already does and that's that's just my thoughts on to it I would probably do that differently for hindsight like I said <sighs> I'm no carpenter you know but I did manage to get through and building the frame and building the sides and everything I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video in the, the video series for Test of Honor. So this brings us up to the next video that we are going to shoot. And it's the video that I've been waiting for for a long time. And that is learning to play the game. So the next video you're going to see in this video series is going to be me with the miniatures on this board that we just built playing the very first scenario. Um, two players, probably, but I'm going to play it solo first before I get anybody in, because I want to learn the rules, obviously, so that I don't lead anybody down a, a wrong path, or we have to stop, like, oh, we played this wrong, we have to delete that footage and play it again properly, or scrap the whole battle report, or what have you. So, I'm going to play a solo mission first, and I'm going to play it on camera so everybody can see it, and then we're just going to move on further and further from there. It's awesome. Playing that game, I'm looking forward to it. This battle board, I'm very pleased with it. Very, very pleased. I like the detail. See all the nice detail into the little uh, face and the stairs there, and so much different color variation into the matting and then you get your little waterway first time i ever built a waterway i'm very pleased with it i like the detail that came out of it i'm glad i put that uh that matte spray down it's still showing a little bit of shine but it's not as much as it did it did cloud up the water a little bit but not every uh waterway has to be super clear you don't have to do that but you can still see like where i put the rocks the moss the fallen tree into it and everything too as well so yeah lots and lots of fun it's a blast making i hope you guys learned something and maybe you learned that never to watch me do a video on building a battle board again who, who knows maybe that's what it is or you know maybe you picked up a couple of tips maybe you're a veteran uh battle board builder you build terrain you build scatter terrain and everything else if so, I would love to hear your feedback and comments. Even if you're not uh, a veteran to building battle boards, just every viewer, I would like to see some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the whole process of building, what you would have done differently, what you thought was that worked out really well, what you thought didn't work out at all, you know, how silly I made these mistakes and everything else. Just comment down below. I'd be interested to hear from you all. So, till next time, you know what's happening here. You're going to talk to some people. That's right, in person, hopefully. Play some board games. Play some tabletop games. Play some Test of Honor Warlord games. Or bolt action games, of course. And most importantly of all, and you know it. Oh, you so know it. And that is, be a maniac. Have fun. See you next video.